So to you all, this is going to be an unboxing and first impressions of the X01, the fire control unit for the Sig Sauer P320. So I actually do not like this gun, um, but I still have one. Um, I'm just not going to get rid of it, but as far as striker fire pistols, polymer pistols, this is probably my least favorite. It kicks a lot more. Uh, has a lot more muzzle flip than all the other striker fire pistols I've owned or even um, you know handled but I still kept it around just because it's usually been in my car because you know if I, somebody steals it breaks in and steals it I really wouldn't miss this one that much but this right here is a chassis for it drop it in the fire control unit the slide the barrel it goes in, and I believe this is going to be my next SBR project, uh, depending on, you know, how this goes. So, let me go on and take this off. I will need that. I don't think I need the recoil spring, but I will need the fire control unit, obviously. If I remember how to take this apart. There we go. Ooh. And it is dirty. It definitely could be cleaned. Alright, simple. There is the gun, the serial number that's going to drop into here. We'll open it up to reveal the XL1. So, the living shirt on top. Thank you for your order. Apparently they're supposed to have an X02, X03, looks like an AR platform. I'm not sure what the difference is between these. It looks like the X02 has a bit of a longer barrel. And this unit has been pre-configured for a compact slide. We'll see. Here we have some grip tape. I believe this part goes around the barrel to charge the slide. And here is the chassis itself. So just looking at it right out the box, it's, I don't, I don't know how to describe it. I'm not sure if it's going to come in that well over the camera, but it's not bad quality, but you know, it's not good quality. So like, if you can tell the finish on these Magpul polymer little M-lock slots, Picatinny slots. The finish on that is a lot better than this polymer. It's, man, I don't know if it's gonna come in well at all. It's just very rough, like it's been, I don't know, worn down a little. Oh, but you got a uh, QD mounts on both sides. You have some openings for a compatible SIG brace or stock. 1913 in the back for your SIG um, brace or stock as well. Cut out for your slide release, slide stop. Your takedown lever goes here. I will have to take the magazine release, put it in here. I'm going to have to watch how to take that apart. You have an M-lock slot right here for a vertical grip. We'll see how that goes if I want to SBR this. And it comes with the two M-lock uh, 1913 sections. So let's see if I can open this up. Ooh, that is tight. And that plastic around here, the top isn't very, you know, neat. This thing is tight. Hold on. Oh, I'm going to pause it. I don't know if there's something. Let me figure this out, I'm trying to press this button so I can open this up. All right, I went on and got opened up. Uh, the button was this little hinge. It was just really stiff. So also, I did not mention this before, this is the non-suppressor model. They have one that's apparently cut out to give a little bit more clearance. I got one in my cans, I think this is We'll find out. I think it's a 
outer diameter can. 1.37 the crow axe 9 huh. I don't know I don't have a thread barrel for the P320 but this is not the suppressor model but I think if the barrel you know extended it about right there I don't know if there's enough room for the booster or the uh yeah, the booster to maneuver to function correctly, but I'll definitely try it out. I think it's worth, uh, hopefully, maybe $120 for a barrel for that. So there is a charging part in there already. I'm not sure this looks like what's already in there. I'll just try to put the slide in, see how it goes. Um, first, let's just drop the gun in. They also do offer another model that has the cutout for the P320s with the manual safety. Ew. I'm not even sure if I'm doing it right. I'm going to say that is doing it right. Okay, so let's see. I assume. Alright, so let's see. There should be a pin or a way to take this off from the front. Sorry, I'm doing this off camera. It's just a lot easier. Just knock this front pin out. Uh, I do not think I'll be able to make this work. Oh, yeah, it will slide through just the front. And I'm going to go on and assume I definitely need this. It would help to read the instructions from time to time, but. There we go. Slides going back. Lock it up. It'll take down pin. Sorry if you guys can hear the dog. Come on. Just cut. All right, I am back and I have finally figured out how to put it all together. So everything is in the fire control unit as it should be. So this paper that we originally got with it that says this unit has been configured for a compact slide is a lie. So it was, it had this um, fork charging device in it and this was for the full length slide so this was in it and it was not contacting interacting with the compact slide so this is finished product can't really tell anything except you know the trigger finally figure out how to do the magazine release and this rear button is still stiff there we go all right so here it is as it should be so first I did take the magazine release out of the grip module. That was not the easiest thing. I had to figure out what kind of tool to use to pry that out, but eventually I got that in there. I got the actual receiver, fire control unit, and the receiver. Got the takedown lever in, put the slide on. So actually, you know how I was trying to tap out the pin before? There's actually a little detent on that pin right there. I'm not sure if you guys are gonna be able to see that. But it's a little detent. You actually press that in. I'll see if I can do it now. Do not try to hammer it as I did. But you just press that down right there. And let's see. Hold up. If you 
press that down it's going to make it a lot easier to work with uh, you guys are just going to have to believe me when I said I got it uh, it doesn't want to come out now. there we go alright so you just push a little detent down and the pin starts to come out it should at least Oh, it got snagged up there again. Anyway, this can come off. And it just doesn't want to right now. But anyway, let's see if you guys can see in here. So, it came with a second uh, charging device. So, this one right here, there's more metal in front of it. Instead of this one, there's nothing in front of it. So, this is for the full length slide. The one I put in here is going to be for the compact and carry slide. So these forks engage the front of the slide. There's a little Allen key there, that silver, which they gave you a tool to go with to unscrew that. This charging rod, guide rod, um, doubles as your charging rod. Also, it's your takedown lever. You unscrew that. It's two separate parts. You're able to remove both of these charging handles. I'm not sure if you can use it with just one. I'm going to keep it with both. And as far as the fit, feel, finish of it completed, there is a significant, it's not significant, but um, I'm going to say, you know, not the tightest fitment around there on the back. And still, just the overall finish of this is not the best at all. It does come with some grip tape. I'll probably put that on. I'm um, not sure I'm going to feel about it. I'll try shooting it just as a pistol. See if I want to brace, embrace, invest in a brace, 200 something dollar brace, or, you know, $200 for a tax stamp, and then also maybe like an MCX stock to see. I'm not sure if this is going to be, you know, like this any more than a CC Scorpion on my Chris Vector, but it's worth a try. And ooh, now that I notice, like you guys probably won't be able to tell, but inside that QD mount, there's like some metal shavings. Ooh, yeah. So yeah, the overall aesthetics finish on this is not that great. I got it on sale from Midway. Um, but I'll see. It was I got it for I want to say one seventy five. So I think it was worth you know indulging my curiosity. So I will try to get a threaded barrel for this. See if the suppressor works. I do not know. I will have to take the screws. They come with some. The screws actually go inside that receiver there. You can see that little bit yellow of Loctite. This is probably one of the thinnest cans that you could probably, there might be some 1.25 inch outer diameter cans, but yeah, um, I'll see how that goes. I doubt I will. It was extra to get the suppressor model. I wasn't going to go for that. And you know, it has a full rail on top, so why not try some optics? This is one of my favorites, the DI Optical EG1C. It's absolutely beautiful glass. I think I will just go cheap on here and just get another Sig Romeo 5. <laughs> yeah, I'll get a Sig Romeo 5, put it on there instead of something this big. And But you know, of course, everybody with the 4 inch 9mm barrel. You need a little bit of <laughs> you need a little bit of magnification so you can hit something at 300 yards. This is well, going to be interesting to try out, to say the least. But um, I like trying new things out. You know, if I don't like it, I think I might be able to get my money back selling this on arms list or something. But as far as the operation goes, you can pull it anyway, left side, right side, 
moves this slide back here. You can lock it up. The other side doesn't engage all the way if you lock it up. So that one's still a little bit flat as this one is actually angling forward and you can give it MP5 slap and the slide does close on that. So that is pretty cool. I do like that. So, you know, just stay tuned. I'll take it out to the range, see how it feels with added weight. Does it kick a little bit less? And maybe this might be a nice SBR. If I get a folding brace or a collapsible, you know, something really short package, does it foot maybe, or about a foot, maybe a couple inches under or over, but we'll see. Just stay tuned, see how this interesting product works out.